Hola gringas y gringos, and welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. This week, we're going to show you our Airbnb in San Luis Potosi. Coming up next. How do you feel? It's gonna be a long unload. Yeah, we'll get it. Oh, cute. Oh yeah. Let's look at the kitchen. Oh, spacious shower with a removable shower head. In here is a, another bedroom, smaller bed. I don't know what size bed this is. A full, maybe? Matrimonia. Is this a matrimonia? But it's cute. It's at the corner. Okay. And it's got closets. Okay. Now for the master bedroom. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, there's a chair too. Nice. And now for the patio. Let's go check out that patio. I mean, this is small, but cozy. All right, through the kitchen. Spiral staircase. We do have some cleaning supplies here, which is nice, because I do like to keep tidy. And this is a two-in-one washer-dryer unit, I believe. Yes. Very small hot water tank, Mark Anderson. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> okay. Up the... Oh my gosh, don't do this drunk. Because <laughs> not only is it a spiral staircase, but these steps are about a foot or more apart. Ooh. Oh, but this patio is nice. Very nice. Got us a charcoal grill. 
right here. Oh, so glad that we are inside a garage and we don't have to haul our stuff in that rain. The neighborhood. Welcome. Welcome to San Luis Potosí, says the perro. Where are you, perro? Can I see you? There you are. Oh, little perro.
This is Mark's first churro. <laughs> and? I don't know, it's hot. This one just came out of the mm. grease, or the oil. Good. They're good when they're hot. Ooh. Very good. Very good? Very you like good. it. So what'd you think of that Airbnb? Better question is, what'd you think of the stairs? <laughs> every day, every day we got our steps in. The introduction to that Airbnb, mm -hmm. it took us about 16 trips and we still didn't get it all. We actually got the car unloaded and we took the stuff out of the roof bag and we just stuck it back inside the car because we were like nope no more energy left to climb no. those stairs no. that many more times so and i think paulette from two travelers mexico i think she counted 49 i counted them 
Or did she count 48? It, it was a lot. You counted them. 49? Uh huh. 49 steps. Well, I didn't have anything else to do. I was huffing and puffing going up and down the stairs. It I mean, was... at least I can say we got our steps in and we mm -hmm. were probably better at it and in better shape by the time we left than we were the day we arrived. Oh. <laughs> and, and the other thing about that is, is not only are we huffing and puffing, but San Luis Potosí was the highest elevation mm -hmm. that we have hit so yes. far. Yeah, and, and to be fair, to be fair, the uh, <laughs> number of steps did start to take its toll, but it, it never got to the point where it was like, uh, yeah, I don't want to go down and get a churro because I got to take those, that many steps. So that, it never reached no. the point of being that. The, the lure of the churro was but, enough. But um, <laughs> it was not a large apartment. No. Um, I think it was, I think we were a little taken aback that it was actually as small as it was, yeah. which no fault of, of Airbnb. Um, they showed the pictures and everything else, and they didn't claim that it was large or anything, um, but it was not. It was small. Yeah. And, and the most obvious smallness of the place was Whoa. that kitchen. The kitchen was so tiny that, have you guys ever watched Bar Rescue? John Taffer has a thing he calls the butt funnel, where you can't get past somebody without rubbing butts. That's that was this kitchen. That was the kitchen, and you couldn't you, you couldn't be at the sink and open the refrigerator. You couldn't be at the stove and open or close the kitchen well, door. Well, and then and then <laughs> the way that the the cupboard doors open for where we were putting our food. If you opened the door, you couldn't see into where you what you were trying to get. So. Fortunately, we do carry a toolkit, and Mark took the door off. He took and, the door off, yeah. And, it was actually a good idea. He made it a little pantry space for yeah, us. Yeah, and then I just put the door back on when we left, but yeah, otherwise it was open and didn't have to, uh, so. And um, then how about those, the stairs of death, the spiral oh. staircase of death. I was kind of excited that we had a direct access straight up from the apartment to our patio until I had to try to climb those stairs. They were very narrow. And very high. And very high. They were higher than normal. They were the type of stairs that a sober person could As, potentially yeah. have a hazardous fall. And you don't want to land on anything hard in Mexico, let me tell you. The tile, the floors, we're talking concrete. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and fortunately, the stairs that go up, they're they actually continue up, and so that made getting up to the rooftop terrace so much easier. We never touched those stairs again. Yeah, um, I mean, literally, the stairs you see us climb, there's one more level beyond the apartment that would take us straight to our patio. Yeah, and what we ended up doing was using the stairs to put the cooler and paper towels and coke mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that on because it made it, uh, there's not a lot of room in the kitchen anyway, right. and so that made it very simple. Um, Speaking of that room, the two-in-one washer dryer. May we beg you never uh -huh. buy one of those things for two reasons. One, it never dries your clothes. No. It will never dry your clothes, and you will run it over and over and over again, wasting electricity, wasting time. And since I'm the one that does the laundry, you can't just turn the dryer on, which makes zero sense. Right. You have to run the entire... Well, the rinse cycle anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, you know, I'm trying to get them dry, but no, you're going to make me get them wet again yeah. to try and dry them. Um, and they always came out damp yep. and wrinkled. So we gave up and we took them someplace. Took the clothes to the lavanderia. Yeah. Yeah, because it was just, we probably saved money going to a lavanderia if we had been, if we actually, actually had to pay electricity and such. Yeah. It would have been cheaper for us to just walk to the lavanderia. Yeah, that was close. I mean, it was, it was two and a half blocks away. So it yeah. wasn't like it was a, a yeah. major walk um, to get there. So the location of this Airbnb 
is prime. Oh, without a doubt. Such a good location. Yes. Honestly, if the stairs weren't a hassle, if we were ever considering living in San Luis Potosí, I think that that neighborhood, oh, the, the, the Kiski upon the, neighborhood, it's the best, man. It's nice. Even the other side of the street, um, mm -hmm. across from the Hardeen, back oh, in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that whole area right there was, everything's accessible, mm -hmm. everything's close by. Mm -hmm. um, it is extremely walkable. Um, Flat, the, the sidewalks in general tend to be um, what you expect for a standard size sidewalk, if not wider. Except for a couple of the a side, few. side streets yeah. that, that have some age on them. Yeah. Those were more typical, probably I would say Carretero width, but wider definitely than San Miguel de Allende. Sure. And uh, I can't say, I'm going to say the answer is no to handicap accessible. I know at least on our our path that we would take from the Hardeen to the apartment, I don't recall seeing ramps. And we actually had some very steep curbs that we had to climb up on, about a foot tall. Well, they, they did have um, the accessibility around the Hardeen. Yes, they did. And even on the opposite side of the street from the Hardeen, they had And it. on but, the bigger, wider side. Right, but once, yes. you, once you did get into the, the neighborhood mm -hmm. um, yeah it, it was it was a good 10 12 inch curb and we were approximately two blocks north of Hardin to Kiskiapan mm -hmm. we were approximately seven maybe eight blocks west of Centro and I mean very reasonable walking distance to everything well and what made it an easy walk was the fact that you're walking on a sidewalk that was the width of a road, a road. I mean yeah both, um, both sides whether you were on you know the right side or the left side that sidewalk was massive it was and we had a lot of options for a lot of types of services within a very reasonable walking distance. We, of course, had the bodega to buy uh, simple groceries, mm -hmm. easy, quick groceries. Mm -hmm. We had breakfast options, lunch options, dinner options, all within two blocks, lavanderia within three blocks, centro within seven blocks. We churros. Had churros, pharmacias. And we, churros. There were <laughs> dental offices. And churros. And churros. There were optometrists. And churros. Barber shops and churros, gift shops and churros. <laughs> Can you, do, do you get the message here? It got the point <laughs> that that they were fixing my order mm -hmm. before. You know, once they saw me in line, it was like, okay, we we, we know what he's getting. Zazamora. So, Zazamora, Zazamora, you know, call on Asukat. Yeah, yeah, it, it's true. And whenever we told uh, the young men who worked on the off nights. Oh, they worked during the they week. They alternated. Yeah. Um, when they found out we were leaving, they were like, oh. <laughs> Seems like everywhere we go, there's somebody that's like, no. Stay. Stay. <laughs> but no, I mean, that whole Hardeen area was very refreshing. Um, it was in no way, shape, or form touristy. I mean, no. you, you did see tourists walking around in Carretero. You yeah. saw a lot of tourists walking around in San Miguel. In the Jardin de Tesquisquiapan, it was us, it's, I mean, it's, basically. It's not a tourist location. The tourist location is going to be in Centro. Yes. So. And to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> There is not a huge expat presence in San Luis Potosí. So our Spanish was required most places we went, mm -hmm. with a few exceptions, but it was the most Spanish-speaking location we had been to yet, outside of some Puebla Magicos. Yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna yeah. say Amialco was, well, they looked at us like, you know, and, and we managed to make everything work, but. We did. And, and, and to think of, 
the progression in our Spanish from then till now is, is, has been strong. It's so, true. Um, uh, but I really feel like uh, it's a really cool city and we're going to show you more of it coming up. But that Airbnb was nice, albeit small. Mm -hmm. The location was very nice, mm -hmm. very convenient. Mm -hmm. And we loved that Hardeen. We they, walked a lot. We yeah. walked almost every night. Yeah. Yeah, and while you were gone, I went and got churros. Churros. Yeah. You know, I introduced him to the churro while we were there. His very first churro, as you can see. And um, it got to be the point that he didn't need me anymore to go buy a churro. He just would Well, go. besides that, she wasn't there for a hot, solid week of it. That's so, true. I mean, it was what? I'm just going to hide myself up in the apartment? No. no, I'm going down the hard no, and getting a churro. Get and then, of course, we had we had Rowdy across the street. Yes, we had Rowdy across the street. That was, that was the was dog the... that was barking. Yep. We, 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 <laughs> we don't know what his name is, but or her name is, but we named her Rowdy. Rowdy. And Rowdy's owners um, have antique cars. The father of the household works on them, and he had cars going back into the 1930s on his property. I couldn't figure out why the little dog Rowdy is sitting up on a second floor roof with a bunch of rims mm -hmm. and car seats. And I'm like, why would anybody store car parts up there when you need them? You're going to have to bring them down. Well, when we found out, the man restores yep. cars. Yeah, he had a 37 Roadster and all I kept thinking was, I'm, I'm listening to ZZ Top <laughs> in my head because it was... Yeah, you know, the, the, the flip backwards doors and everything else. And, and I believe it six, belonged. It belonged to a Mexican, a former Mexican president. I think that or was a governor the story. or something. I thought yeah. it was a yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and then a, a sixty four beetle bug and all sorts of uh, of other things that he was constantly out there working on. But uh, no, the, I I think of all the neighborhoods that we have lived in by far of the, of the three at that point that neighborhood takes the cake um, it was my favorite neighborhood mm -hmm. it really was and it was my favorite neighborhood because everything was in walking distance you don't need a car and it was flat and it was flat and if you did need transportation into central or something and you didn't want to walk it you could take the bus or take cab a cat taxi. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there, there's plenty of options available. Oh, even the hospital. Even the hospital was not even Whoa, two the, blocks away. We had the urgent care clinic right mm -hmm. down on the same block that we passed mm -hmm. every time we went to the bodega. And then the opposite direction, a block and a half away, is an actual hospital. So. There was one issue we had, and this happened while I was in the United States and Mark was there. We ran out of water. and. What yeah. I didn't realize, I started looking, what I didn't realize is right before we landed in San Luis Potosi, maybe not even a week prior to that, there was a news article requesting that the residents of San Luis reduce their water consumption by 50% because their reservoir was down to 13% mm -hmm. capacity. Now this is right near the end of the dry season. Yeah, the rainy season and, was yeah. just a few weeks away, but. So they were at the end of that drought period and water was getting very scarce. And um, you know, water, water scarcity can be a very common thing in a lot of areas of Mexico. So what we didn't know is that our host had his brother-in-law fill the Tanaco. Tanaco. And did not know. Oh. Tinaco. So he had him fill the Tinaco, and um, we had been using that water for our showers and everything. And mm. well, it's not like we were going to be guilty of overconsumption no. of water. No. It just, I mean, we just we used it. Yeah, I mean, we ran out. And they had, they must have had the water turned off, and they had filled the the Tinaco and expected that that would last for us. And uh, we let them know that we had run out. And next thing you know. Yep. They came out, and I guess they refilled it, and they probably turned it off again, I would imagine. And we made it through with no problem. I mean, I just had and, a, a one day while you were gone that yeah. didn't have any water. And, and I was really concerned. In the video you saw, I made mention of the very small hot water tank, because Mark likes to take very hot 
hot showers. Well, let me tell you. Not that hot. That hot water tank was turned up so hot, it would scald you. It was 72 degrees Celsius. Yes. It was hot. And 100 is boiling, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it was hot. So, no, we didn't have to use no. uh, a, a lot, lot of hot water. <laughs> In fact, when I'm scrubbing the floors, um, you know, when we get dust and stuff, I have to scrub, mop the floors. I can't even stick my hand to ring the mop because it's so hot. Yeah, it was it was hot. Yeah. So but, I thought. And, and the only other th only other thing that I would say that was a negative about that hmm. was that the toilets and the proximity of the wall right in front of you that when you sat down <laughs> you literally had a wall this far from your nose it was a small apartment i mean it was small but just yeah i mean they maximized what they could with the space they had so. it just was sort of and the towel bar was right there thank god the towel bar was there because you needed it to you stand needed up. It because you didn't have any room to be able to go forward, so you had to grab the ends of the towel bar to get your leverage to be able to get your butt up off the toilet. So oh, goodness, that's TMI. But well, I'm just saying thank that's thank you. And one of the air conditioning units did stop working. You did get the one in the bedroom working for two days while you were gone. Two days, and then when I came back, it didn't work. And we really didn't need it most of the time. We honestly didn't. No, it only got hot a few times. Let me put it this way. If we were going to be in a location that it wasn't going to work, you know, Carretero, San Miguel, and, and there in San Luis Potosí, I think we had two days worth of turning the air on yeah. the entire time. It was fine. Here in El Tejad, if we didn't have air conditioning, we would die. We would die. But that's another video yes. for another day. Yes. So I would say overall... Um, this was a really good Airbnb. Mm -hmm. I will honestly say that there was no false advertising. Nope. Everything that the host showed was exactly the way it was. Yep. He was in constant communication with us. Makes him a great host, in my opinion. He, he responded he, immediately to the water issue. He, he had the uh, instruction booklet there for everything. Yes. Yeah, on one side was Spanish, the other side was English. Yes. So that made things very convenient as well. Yes. And, and if you were just going down there and didn't have all of your life's belongings that you had to hike up the stairs. Yeah. If, if it was a case of two suitcases a piece. Yeah. That would have been a breeze. Not, that, and, not, and, not 16 trips and then five more the next day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, the, and, and, the, and the other problem was, is because of the size of it, there wasn't a whole lot of storage space. We ended up having to use the entire second bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I mean the closet, both sides of the bed, on the bed. Yeah. So, um, but, but again, that's because we have so much stuff that we're carrying around with us that mm -hmm. it's, it's really not designed for that type of, of uh, storage. But I would say... It was a very nice Airbnb, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, I, we left a good review, Yep. and uh, the host was great, the location was great. If you're considering a visit to San Luis Potosí, we really recommend it. Um, you get garage space, yep. his instructions on how to get the keys to get to all this was very clear. Excellent communicator. Mm -hmm. And that is our Airbnb video. Hope you found that interesting and helpful. It's a, that, that was a city that sort of popped on our radar at the last minute, and boy, are we glad that we yeah. chose to go to San Luis Potosi yeah. because I would have hated to have missed that. And our regret is not actually having been there longer. Well, especially some of us, because some of us weren't there longer. Uh, mm -hmm. Whole nother story. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in today. Remember, we are Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. We, we are, are doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Here's some other videos that you might want to watch. <laughs>